Uh, yeah, hi, and welcome to another episode of Crime Pace with Biden. He doesn't. It's a chilly day in South Texas. It's only 94, not 105. And uh, I'm here to show you a species of plant, a species of sunflower, that's pretty remarkable, okay? It's one of the most drought-resistant, fast-growing species of sunflowers I've ever seen. It's the silver leaf sunflower, endemic to the Texas sand sheet. A little, uh, cute little geologic formation we got down here in the south uh, part of the state in the quote-unquote nutsack of Texas. This is Helianthus argophyllus, the silver leaf sunflower. And you can see why it gets that name. These leaves are just covered in a wool. Do you see that? They're just covered in a thick wool and, and the new growth almost looks like a goddamn Q-tip. You see that? So woolly it looks like a Q-tip. Nice insulating layer of hairs because this fast draining sand uh, can be a stressful environment for plants to grow in. So they're gonna lose moisture really fast and so in order to fight that, uh, like most plants do, they'll uh, produce trichomes, they'll produce hairs. And uh, this is a great example of it. All right, so same genus as the normal sunflowers is the giant bastards you see being cultivated on the side of the road in fields in some places in this country. Uh, but uh, it's been through the selection pressure of uh, this geologic substrate, this fast draining sandy soil. Look at this. So let's take a look at this flower. Let's take a look at this flower and what's going on. So it's just a typical sunflower from the front. Turn that thing around and you see those five. Look at that. You got like cobwebs. You got freaking cobwebs on those fileries. How does it do that? How does it do that? Again, just selection pressure. Just a, a master course in evolution. And since it's an annual, it's got a high turnover rate so things can evolve pretty quickly. All right, ample genetic recombination. However many, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of uh, genetic recombination events every year, every time one of those individual florets inside this massive capitulum is pollinated. Right here, you got another species of sunflower. This one also endemic to the sand sheet. This is a Helianthus praecox variety runyonii. Okay, just looks like a normal uh, little DYC Okay, nothing too notable. Look at the, flip it over, look at the phyleries because when you got all these uh, flowers that look so similar, you got, you know, in the sunflower family, the DYCs, the damn yellow composites, you gotta flip that flower over and look at the phyleries, those little bracts right there, those little spiky bracts. They can be diagnostic. Like many sunflowers, this species has, uh, you know, it's, it's quite scabbard. See those little hairs on there? Kinda got like the texture of sandpaper. All right, the leaves, tiny. All right, reducing the surface area because of the extreme heat. 
and the uh, near drought conditions of uh, growing on sand. Okay, so same genus, but then you got this guy, which is just a whole nother, whole nother bag of worms right there. And look at these leaves. Look at this growth, okay? That, that thing is damn near 16 feet tall over there. That's a single season's of, of worth of growth. So these seeds germinated in April, and it's now, you know, it's mid-August. So that's, so what is that, four and a half months of growth? They grow extremely fast. They thrive in the heat. They need the full sun. If they don't get the full sun, they're not going to thrive. But I've also grown these in uh, Oakland. Okay, I had some of these in the illegal garden I planted. Look at that, just like a dog ear. Like, it feels like a goddamn dog ear, almost like mullen. Like a floppy goddamn Labrador ear. Look at that, look at that, holy shit, a goddamn, a forest in four months. Excellent shade cover in four months. If you if you live in a hot ass environment and you need some shade cover, you got a bare front, uh, front yard, so you just killed your lawn, you plant some of these guys in there, okay, you water them, they'll grow like hell. Look at that, 15 feet tall, just, you know, instant shade look at that and then of course in the winter they die back whole plant disappears you cut it away remove it after it's gone to seed and then uh you know so in the winter when you want that sun uh, you get it back and then of course the seeds up there and those flowers the seeds are tiny they're tiny and they're great food for birds you get the birds coming through here all the migrating all the migrating birds and what the shit give them a little lunch buffet little lunch counter stop off you know, I already got stopped by the border patrol and I get it because this, I am on a smuggling route, you know. That's where the money is now, I guess. You drop people off south of the checkpoint, they run around it, and then you go pick them up north. Uh, and so <laughs> I happen, you know, I happen to stop and look at this and it uh, looks, it does indeed look kind of sketchy. And the back of my truck is empty, so they were, you know, but it took 20 minutes, but I finally convinced them I wasn't, uh, you know, smuggling, uh, smuggling families of people. Can you imagine walking through this heat too? I mean, it's a chilly day now, but it's still pretty fucking hot. But anyway, so, you know, they got their drones and, you know, uh, aerial rectal exam, whatever they do up there, but they could figure out who's running around. So, you know, but I think it was, you know, some do-gooder reported me as actually dropping off people just because I was stopped on the side of the road. Fucking jackass didn't see the camera or anything, I guess. So some John Q taxpayer. The benefits of having a militarized border. How about that? Anyway, let's not talk about that. It's kind of a, a bummer topic, but you can see they're just starting to flower right now. They're flowering in the heat of summer, the heat of late summer. Look at it. And let's let's look at the, the uh, apical growth here. You see that? Look at that. Look at how goddamn woolly that is. It's interesting to note that during the Texas freeze, okay, in February of 2021, uh, I had a couple of these. They were only a foot or two tall, you know, because it'll still be, you'll still get 80 degree days here in January. In South Texas, in the nutsack of Texas, it is hot as balls. Uh, you know, so we had a, I had a couple growing in the garden. They're only two or three feet tall. Not enough heat for them to, you know, get this big yet. And they, the seed had just germinated. But they were two or three feet tall when that freeze came through. You know, we got that that jet stream was fucking around up north, and a, a big cold blast, the Arctic air came down here. And uh, of all the herbaceous and annual plants, you know, the non-woody plants. Uh, this was one of the only ones that came through that freeze okay because it's got that thick insulating layer of trichomes and that makes sense because hairs you normally think of them if you think of them at all as uh either you know most of the time what they're doing is increasing that boundary layer of humidity preventing transpiration of moisture from the leaves or they're uh, reflecting sunlight keeping the leaf temperature down you know because photosynthesis will stall at very high temperatures Okay, but they also provide insulation from the cold, and you'll see that in a lot of plants that you see growing at high elevations in the low latitudes, like the northern Andes, in the Paramo, Espaletia, that really cool member of the same family that grows in a Paramo in Colombia and Ecuador, is woolly as hell. That's because those nights can get down to uh, freezing, and so it's frost protection. But these plants came through fine. They were, you know, a little bit shorter than this, but they still had all that wool on them. The Texas freeze came through just melted every every tropical plant that was in existence in human horticulture the natives had no problem with it of course the native plants uh, didn't suffer and uh, but a lot of horticultural uh, atrocities like some of those terrible queen palms just died and it made me feel good to see them you know it's still sticking up months later because uh, you know they're like the suburban tree down here but anyway but these came through fine just that hair that hair provided insulation from those freezing temperatures 
God, the cicadas are really, the cicadas are almost louder than the trucks. So yeah, it's a pretty plant and what the shit, but the important thing here is that it's shading the ground, preventing, you know, that uh, ground from losing more moisture than it otherwise might if it was in the full sun. It's providing habitat for critters and it's providing a food source when these flowers go to seed in two or three months for all the birds that'll be passing through here. But look at that, instant forest, instant shade. And uh, you know, you don't gotta commit to it. It's not like putting a goddamn tree in a yard. You're gonna have to, you know, pay some freaking drunk arborist $1,500 to come by and cut down later. Okay, so let's get one of these bastards down again. See, it's, they're, they're not really gonna be going off fully for another couple weeks. All right, so there's a lot more going on here than just a pretty flower, okay? You got, you got, you know, a million or two million, who knows how many millions of years of selection pressure environment selecting for certain traits there's a whole ecological and evolutionary story going on here right i like plants yeah they're pretty and with the shit yeah maybe they, they could be medicinal all plants are you know pharmaceutical factories in one way or another okay uh that's all interesting and well and good but what i really like is the uh, evolutionary story here and here you go here it is look at how goddamn woolly it is these, these can be hybridized with uh other species of helianthus, other species of sunflower, uh, to produce more drought-resistant uh, kinds of uh, of helianthus, uh, more drought-resistant kinds of sunflower. So pretty remarkable. The whole story, all right. Just like a human would be selecting for, you know, you grow a thousand tomato seedlings, you pick the two that you like to produce fruit that turn a certain color or last longer. The environment selects for different. Uh, different uh, traits in a plant okay in this case the south texas sand sheet selected for these intensely woolly uh goddamn sunflowers so they can have these big leaves still they can have all that surface area exposed to the sun and it doesn't matter because they're covered in hairs whereas like this guy you got to have small leaves okay it's a that's a tactic a lot of desert plants do and from really hot you know seasonally dry areas they reduce the surface area exposed to the sun uh, so they're not losing as much moisture. Not so with the silver leaf sunflower. You got that big, you can look at all that surface area. Look at some of the leaves down here. They're giant. Oh, there's a, someone's got a web down. Oh, that's, oh, there's a spider in there. Who's in there? Who's hanging out? Oh, that's a black widow. How about that? I'm glad I didn't touch it. Look at it. You see, he's got a little hourglass thing on his ass. My friend Pete got bit by one of those things and uh, he said his, his arm went numb. Let me see. Let me, I'm sorry, guy. Do you see him in there? Do you see that guy? Little red hourglass on his, on her ass, I guess. Don't want to misgender the spider. Anyway, look at that croton too. Even the croton's goddamn woolly as hell. Look at that. So many woolly plants down here. See, a lot of unrelated plants doing the same thing. Just creating, you know, evolving trichomes. Creating that thick layer of insulation from the sun and the excess UV to enable them to thrive in this really barren, sandy, nutrient-poor, fast-draining soil. Anyway, that's all I got. Really nice story to take a closer look. You learn a thing or two, you get a greater context for the environment around you and for yourself, for your own silly ass. That's all I got for you this afternoon. Have a great day. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Look at that. Look at all that wool. Do you see that wool? You see all that wool on that stem? Look at that. It's ridiculous. Look, it's almost obscene. It's like a bunch of white pubes. It looks like that that uh, looks like that fake cobwebbing that uh, some people put in their yards for Halloween. You know, that all that plastic that just ends up in the ocean. Look at that. Goddamn, like a cobwebby goddamn helianthus. Maybe that's why the black widow's hanging out right there. How about that?